Welcome to example number seven. Let's suppose you wanted to place a weather satellite into a circular orbit so that it's 300 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Welcome to example number seven. Suppose you want to place a weather satellite into a circular orbit 300 kilometers above the Earth's surface. What speed, period, and centripetal acceleration must it have? So we're given the Earth's radius is 6,380 kilometers and the mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms. So let's label this diagram a little bit to show you where the 300 kilometers are and then the 6,380 kilometers. So this is definitely not drawn to scale here as you can see. So the 300 kilometers is here. This is known as the altitude of the satellite above the Earth's surface and then we have the 6,380 kilometers. This is the radius of the Earth. So R is the total distance of these two added together. Let's write down all the given information. We know that the mass of the Earth will represent with M with the subscript E is 5.98 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms. We have R. R is the radius of orbit. That would be 300 kilometers plus 6,380 kilometers. And that's all we have. We're not even given the mass of the satellite because if you remember from before, the mass cancels out. Okay, and we're trying to find several things. In A part, we're trying to find uh, the speed. That's called B part, the period. And C part, we'll call the centripetal acceleration. Okay, so let's start off with part A. To find the velocity, one might think, oh, the velocity is the total distance, 2 pi r, divided the, by the period. But the problem with that is you do not know the time that it takes to go around in one cycle. In fact, that's what you're asked to find in part b. So really, to start this problem, you really need to uh, use our Newton's second law, sum of f equals ma, and that this satellite is accelerating towards the center, so this is centripetal acceleration, so we're going to write, rewrite this as mv squared over r. Little m represents the mass of the satellite, and then the force that's uh, causing it to accelerate towards the center is the force of gravity, which is given by g, little m, big M, that's the mass of the Earth, divided by the radius of orbit squared. And you can see that the mass of the satellite is relevant because it cancels out, one of the r's cancels out. And solving for v yields the following expression, g m of the earth divided by r of orbit. So now let's substitute our values in. We have m, g is 6.67 times 10 to the power negative 11. Uh, this is Newton's universal gravitation constant. Let's put the units in there. Newton meters squared all over kilograms squared. Then we're going to be multiplying by the mass of the earth, which is 5.98 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms. And then all of this is being divided by the radius of orbit. And the radius of orbit is 300 kilometers plus 6,380. That gives you 6,680 kilometers. But remember that if you look carefully, these are units of meters, which means that the radius must be also put in meters. So this is 6,680 times 1,000 to get from kilometers to meters. And so if you put that into your equation, I believe you will get 7,730 meters per second. So that's part A, I guess we can call. And so now we move on to part B. In part B, you may remember that the speed is equal to the circumference divided by the period. So therefore, our period is equal to 2 pi r divided by what we got as the velocity earlier. So let's go ahead and substitute into there. 2 pi r, r was 6680000 meters, and then divided by the velocity we just found, which is 7730 meters per second. So that will give you a period of 5430 seconds. And if you convert this into minutes by uh, dividing by 60 seconds for every minute, you'll get the period is about 90.5 minutes. So this is how long the satellite will revolve around the Earth. Now, there are other satellites that revolve around the Earth in basically 24 hours, which
which is the revolution of the Earth. Those kind of satellites have a different name. They're called geostationary satellites. They're satellites that remain in the same geographic location above uh, whatever continent they are. They're like your satellites for your communications. For example, your satellite dish. Now let's get the radial acceleration. That's the centripetal acceleration, which is velocity squared divided by r. The velocity was 7730 meters per second squared divided by r, which is 6680000 meters. And when you plug that into your calculator, I believe you'll get 8.95 meters per second squared. So this is really the acceleration due to gravity at that point. It's obviously less than 9.8 on the surface of the Earth. And that's it for this example.